Hi there, kids. Let's get into lesson 12. This is module four, and I believe it is the last lesson before the mid-module assessment, um, even though there's a lot more in the second part of module four. So this is just kind of that extra bonus word problem uh, lesson. So teachers might be skipping this, but I'm going to go ahead and cover this material anyway because uh, I think more practice is better, especially with word problems. So if you find these videos helpful, click subscribe, be a regular subscriber, and then you can see all these super fun videos that I post. And I do try to be very helpful, even though I may make you think and do things on your own every now and then, most of the time I cover all this stuff in the problem sets. So let's get started. A baseball team played 32 games and lost eight. Katie was the catcher in five-eighths of the winning games and one-fourth of the losing games. What fraction of the games did the team win? So this actually, uh, sometimes when I read these, again, not a math major, um, they're kind of confusing for me. It's like, are they, why? Like, I just want to go right into the numbers, not the fractions. Um, but anyway, so we're going to look at the total games and then we're going to break it down from here. So if they have 32 games and they lost eight, let's just take out these eight games right away. Okay. And that is going to leave us with 24 wins. Okay. So lose, win, and this is going to be 24. Now we have something that we can kind of work with, so we have wins and losses. Um, Katie was the catcher in five-eighths of the winning games. So remember fraction of a number and one-fourth of the losing games. So if you want to kind of look at uh, what fraction of the games did the team win and then how many games are in how many games did Katie play catcher, uh, we just have to do a fraction of a number, and there are a couple different ways you can do it. Um, if you look at the losses, then you could say 8 out of 32 equal the lost games, just so you know what you're... I always say label everything. Label everything. Okay, 8 out of 32 is the lost games. But this can be simplified. Okay, if you were to remember, find that common divisor, divide both by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. And 32 divided by 8 is 4. So the number of lost games, and you can kind of see that because 24 can be divided uh, by 8 three times. So you can kind of see how we're building this up. And so uh, one-fourth of the games were lost. And if you take the total games, being four-fourths, and you take away the uh, loss, the losses, all loss that's going to equal the win and so really it's just kind of a simple little fraction simplification problem uh, for that one but we kind of need this to go ahead with our next section in how many games did Katie play catcher so she played catcher in wins and losses so we're going to use the fractions now five-eighths of the winning games of 24 and so we're gonna do the 5 times 24 over 8 and remember in the previous lessons we've been learning about the commutative property and moving that denominator back and forth so that we can simplify so 24 eighths is gonna give you 3 and so Katie is catcher and 15 games oops that are winners winning games Boop. and then how about the losing games one fourth of eight okay so use this data here and again move that four commutative property says I can shuffle back and forth turn it into eight fourths which becomes two and so two losing games and so in how many games did Katie play catcher? That's really just taking your answers. 17 games. She was catcher. 
in. There we go. Now it's a complete sentence. Okay, so that's number one. Not too bad, right? You break it apart like that. Now the next one, to kind of fold my book, push it up. That's not right. Okay. Straighten it up. Okay, in Mrs. Elliot's garden, one eighth of the flowers are red, one fourth of them are purple, and one fifth of the remaining flowers are pink. If there are 128 flowers in all, how many flowers are pink? So let's make a tape diagram so we can show, let's make it kind of long, so we have lots of different colors. 128. And for sectioning it off, we've got some clear cut colors and fractions. One eighth of the flowers are red, one fourth of them are purple. Then it's got one fifth of the remaining. Now, let's just ignore this for a moment, okay? One eighth of all the flowers and one fourth of all the flowers. If I make one fourth into an equivalent fraction, then I can just section this off into eight pieces and I can identify the reds and the purples. Okay, so one eighth are red and one fourth are purple, but that means two eighths. So again, a different kind of shading. Purple, purple. And now I have a little something that I can kind of think about. One fifth of the remaining uh, flowers are pink. So what I want to kind of do is take a look at this one fifth of what? One, two, three, four, five. One fifth of five eighths. One fifth of five eighths of the 128. So if I can figure out how many, which I can actually go one, two, three, four, five, and since this is five and I only want one, then it's really one eighth, but let's multiply it out and I'll show you. <clears throat> let's use the commutative property to shuffle these two. This becomes one. and then we're left with 1 eighth times one. Okay, so this is your, you can see it in the fraction, in the tape diagram, the model, and then you can see that it's here. So what is this in a number? Because they're asking how many flowers are pink, so I need to know actually a number, not just a fraction. So it's really 1 eighth of 128. That is the final question. Oops, kind of out of order. Okay, so anyway, this is what things will kind of look like, and you want to kind of shuffle that over there. And then simplify. If you don't really know, you could start with 2 because they're both even. I can see that they're both divisible by 4 because um, 4 goes into 8 two times, and then this is a multiple of 4, and 8 is a multiple of 4. But what is what about 8? Can I get 8 in there? So 8 would fit into 12 one time with four left over, and then four would combine with eight for 48. So I can use eight. I'm doing all that in my head so I can avoid writing all the work, but you could certainly write it out if you feel like it. Eight fits into eight one time, and then it goes into 12 one time with four left over, and then combine that and for 16. So 48 divided by eight is six. So I know that I'm going to have 16 pink flowers. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, Lillian and Darlene plan to get their homework finished within one hour. Darlene completes her math homework in three-fifths of an hour. Lillian completes her math homework with five-sixths of an hour remaining. That means she completed it in the other part, so it's one-sixth done okay so you're just looking and thinking looking and thinking okay who completes her homework faster you might know that right away but then by how many minutes so we do have to do a little bit of figuring here so let's make a tape diagram so you can see the parts with the fractional units 
So we'll start out with Darlene. And then we have Lillian. And we'll just make equal size fractions or frac uh, tape diagrams. And she, Darlene completes her math homework in three fifths. So one, two, three, four, five. And so she's actually doing the work here. So she's working. Okay, and then she's finished with that. And this, all this time here, is an hour, 60 minutes. Okay, for each of them, it's 60 minutes. Lillian completes her math homework with five sixths remaining. So let's divide this into six pieces. And she finished her work here. And then this is the remaining time. Okay. So who completes her homework faster and by how many minutes? Well, it's pretty clear that Lillian is a lot faster, but <clears throat> we need to figure out by how many minutes. So you can take your work time and figure out how long it took Darlene by doing three-fifths of 60. over 5. Now if we move that 5, we know that 60 is evenly divisible by 5. Hopefully you do or you'll catch on in a little bit. 12 times. 12 times 5 is 60. And then multiply 3 times 12 and get 36 minutes <coughs> for Darlene to finish her homework. And then Lillian is 1 sixth of 60. Over 6. And 60 is a multiple, so again, 60 sixths, <laughs> sixths is uh, 10, and then that gives us 10 minutes. Lillian's on the express homework path. And uh, so by how many minutes? We're just going to have our 36 minus 10, 26 minutes. And that's Lillian is 26 minutes faster. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I have water handy now. So I have to drink my water. Okay, now, oh, oh, I know you guys don't like it when I do this, but okay. I'm not going to give you the story. I'm not giving you the story. I want you to create your own story problem. But I will show you just a little something uh, to help you think about it. I, I don't like to, like, give away any wording for this story problem because you guys are so much more creative than I am. Your, your word problems are way, way better. Way better. But I will show you a, a tape diagram that you can use. Create and solve a story problem about a baker. Okay, make up the baker. Lots of TV shows have bakers on them. And some flour whose solution is given by the expression one fourth of three plus five. So the, I will show you how to do the tape diagram. Now the four is a clue here that your tape diagram should be in four parts, okay? <clears throat> and this is what the one fourth would, re would represent. I can talk. I just learned how to speak. It's the one fourth of this, the 3 plus 5. Now, you can do the 3 plus 5 like this, or you can actually solve it. But in your problem, you need to identify different components. Okay? So there are all different types of flour, and I would suggest having different types of flour. You could have three cups left in the old bag and five cups in the new bag. You can have spelt flour here. You can have white flour here. You can have whole wheat flour there are many different types of flour, um, but you're going to be combining it. So whatever you are combining in your word problem, you want to talk about putting those flowers together. And then if, if you're separating all these eight cups of flour into four things, eight cups is kind of a lot. Maybe each one of these is a pie or a cake or a batch of cookies or something like that. That is going to be your problem, and you guys write that. This is what you can set it up as, and then you can solve. And I have to tell you, I have to reveal something. 
I had never even looked at the answer key for this problem because we just talk about it when all the kids are here. And in the book, they don't even solve it. I was like, dudes, you left the answer out. So anyway, uh, it's less maybe about the answer than just about creating the problem. But I do want you guys to solve it because it says to solve. In my class, anyway. Uh, create and solve, again, uh, a story problem about a baker, another baker, must have been snack time, and 36 kilograms of an ingredient that is modeled by the following tape diagram. Now, an ingredient, um, when I look at this, I think, oh my gosh, there's so many different ingredients. Um, this is kilograms, you're putting you know, flour and sugar and you have wet ingredients and dry ingredients. You could have dry ingredients here if you want. Can you read that? Can you read my chicken scratch? Dry ingredients, you could have wet ingredients here. Wet, that would be like oil, eggs, butter, something like that. If you do any baking, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and so you're gonna be trying to identify what half of one third is. Okay, now you have at least one fraction. So half of one third, that has two fractions. And so you can, uh, you can set it up any way you want. Again, you can talk about all the baking shows, Carlos Bakery, um, but you're, you really want to identify what this one half of the one third is okay, and and any any type of story problem is fine. Uh, I'm sure your teachers will be blown away by all the different uh, types of things that you guys are making in your stories. Um, so I hope that's enough for you guys uh, to kind of get you started. At least the tape diagram is there, and then there's really only one problem left. And it is about <clears throat> Mr. Smith's fifth grade class and Mrs. Jacobs' class. So of the students in Mr. Smith's fifth grade class, one third were absent on Monday. Uh, that's not very good. Okay, I'm just saying, that's a lot of students. It, of the students in Mrs. Jacobs' class, two fifths were absent on Monday. Holy moly, they must, oh dear, we don't even wanna talk about COVID. Um, Two-fifths were absent on Monday. If there were four students absent in each class, so apparently their classes are very small, unlike mine, which is super big, how many students are in each class? Let's make a tape diagram so we can identify each teacher's class. Mr. Smith, Mrs. Jacobs. And we have one-third absent on Monday. How sad. And two-fifths. One, two, three, four, five. And there were four students absent in each class. So that equals four. And this equals four. How many students are in each class? Well, if you make a tape diagram, you can see how many students are there. Essentially, what you're doing is you're creating a picture so that you can have a simple uh, solution. Okay, that's what these tape diagrams are great for. It shows the part to whole relationship. So we're taking the one part and multiplying it, or you can subtract, you can add, it, it's, it's all the same. Um, and so you can break this down if I have uh, two units equal four, then one unit equals four divided by two, and so one unit equals two. And then you can do two times five. And you can remember, you can find the amount of any if you can find the amount of one. Okay, so Mr. Smith's class has 12 students, like what? I got 32. And Mrs. Jacobs has 10 students. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what happened to everybody? <laughs> anyway, that's obviously, I'm a little punchy today. And uh, that's the end of lesson 12. So I hope you guys have a phenomenal day. And I'll see you on the next one.